Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So today's episode comes to you courtesy of my amazing patrons. Once a month, patrons vote on what Khmer they want to see in an upcoming episode. The Khmer that gets the most votes wins. And the Khmer that got the most votes this month was Toski, Bearer of Secrets. Toski is a 1-1 indestructible squirrel that can't be countered at any cost, 3 and a green. Toski attacks each combat a fable, and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So first off, though Toski has to attack each turn, he's incredibly hard to kill. Not only is he indestructible, but he also can't be countered. And secondly, the amount of card advantage that this commander can provide you is absolutely absurd. The more creatures that you hit your opponents with each combat, the more cards that you draw. So our strategy is going to be to get out a ton of evasive creatures that are low to the ground. Again, the more creatures that we can get out and get through, the more cards that we can draw. And we can also pump our team, making our creatures incredibly deadly and able to take out our opponents. Also, a huge thank you to Sir Proxy for sending over this amazing proxy of Toski. You can find more of Sir Proxy's amazing work at Sir Proxy on Twitter and Instagram. And now let's jump into the other cards. So in this deck, our sources of ramp are going to be mana dorks like Arbor Elf, Land of War Elves, and Land of War Mentor. They can help us ramp incredibly early and really efficiently, but also we can use them in combat as well. Early on, there might not be any blockers on the field, and later on, we've got ways to make them evasive. So cards like Arbor Elf and Land War Elves do ramp us on turn one, though in different ways. Arbor Elf can tap to untap a forest, and Land War Elves can simply tap to tap for a green. And then Land War Mentor actually doesn't ramp us itself, but it does help us create more ramp sources. Essentially, by paying a green and tapping it and discarding a card, we make another Land War Elves. We're going to have plenty of cards to discard in this deck because, again, our commander can draw us an absurd amount of cards. So this creature token creating mana ramp engine can be huge for this deck. Now again, we do want our creatures to be very low to the ground, and most of them are at 1 CMC, but we've got some that are a bit higher. Though for the creatures that we have at higher CMCs, we want them to be incredibly efficient like Leaf Kindred, Landwar Tribe, and Elvish Archdruid. Leaf Kindred just taps for a green, but if we've got 4 more creatures, we add green green instead. In this deck, 4 creatures is absolutely nothing, and it's a very easy requirement for us to meet. And then Landwar Tribe might cost green green green, but it taps to add green green green. Elvish Archdruid can tap for even more, it says other elf creatures you control get plus plus 1, and tap to add green for each elf you control. Now, although this deck is not Elf Tribal, we do have a good amount of Elves in this deck. So on top of pumping our Elves, this can easily tap for 3 plus mana. Now, outside of Mana Dorks, we want other creatures that are very low to the ground, but we also want them to be evasive like Scrib Sprites and Spire Tracer. Now, there aren't too many creatures with flying in green, but Scrib Sprites is a nice exception. It's simply a 1-1 flyer for a green, but that's perfect for this deck. And then Spire Tracer doesn't have flying, but it essentially does in combat because it says it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. Again, getting a lot of these creatures down early is huge for a deck like this. Because right when Toski gets out, we can swing out and get a ton of cards. Now, as I said before, green doesn't have access to a lot of flyers, but it has access to other forms of evasion, which we can see on Jukai Messenger and Marsh Boa. Jukai Messenger is a 1-1 for a green that has Forest Walk. And then Marsh Boa is a 1-1 for a green with Swamp Walk. Chances are, in a game of Commander, at least one of our opponents is going to have either a Forest or a Swamp. So although these might limit us on who we can attack with them, they are guaranteed to get through when one of our opponents has one of those lands. And again, though it's not a lot of damage, it is going to be a card draw every single time they get through. And finally, we've also got some other creatures that don't necessarily have evasion, but they do give our opponents a reason not to block them. For example, Sedge Scorpion is a 1-1 with Death Touch for a green. Unless our opponents have a token or a chump blocker, it's going to be really hard for them to justify blocking this. The trade-off for them is pretty big. Either they can use a more valuable creature, or they can just take one point of damage. So yeah, a lot of the time, we're going to be getting through and drawing that card. And we can also run a creature like Scoop Mob that can get bigger throughout the game. It starts off as just a 1-1 for a green, but it says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 5 or more lands, put 4 plus plus 1 counters on Scoop Mob. So we can get this down early and get some hits in before our opponents have any blockers. And then later on in the game, this thing can be incredibly huge and hit for a ton.
We're also going to be running some ways to flood the board with tokens and just get through by sheer numbers. Scroll Nest can enchant a land, and the enchanted land has tap create a 1 1 green squirrel creature token. So on each of our turns, we essentially get a squirrel, and yeah, Toski loves the squirrel company. We're also going to be running Verdant Embrace, which is an aura, and it says enchanted creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and has at the beginning of each upkeep create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. Now, normally auras are a bit risky, but in this case, our commander has indestructible. So turning Toski into a 4-4 that makes us a 1-1 on every single upkeep is huge. Again, for each trip around the table, that's going to be 4 Saffirlings. So these can be fantastic jump blockers, or we can just swing out and utilize them to draw a lot of cards, or later on in the game they can be incredibly deadly when we've got ways to pump them. And we can even utilize our lands with something like Kamal's Will. It's an instant and says choose one, but if you control a commander as you cast this spell, you may choose both. Until end of turn, any number of target lands you control become 1-1 elemental creatures with Vigilance, Indestructible, and Haste, they're still lands. Or choose target creature you don't control, each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to that creature. So the vast majority of the time we're going to get both of these, basically just making all of our lands into creatures that are going to be really hard to deal with and don't even have to tap when they attack. So we can just swing with them freely and then draw a ton of cards when they get through. On top of that, we can utilize this as basically a creature removal spell as well. This is a fantastic card that can help us out in a lot of situations throughout the game. Now, many of our creatures do have some form of evasion, but there's other ways that we can pretty much guarantee that we're getting all of our creatures through, like Nemesis Mask. It's an equipment for three, and it says all creatures able to block a equipped creature do so, and it's got equipped for three. So we throw this on Toski, and then all of one of our opponent's creatures has to block Toski. Toski's got indestructible, so he's gonna be fine, and then the rest of our creatures can just come on through. A card like this can really help us draw a ton of cards throughout the game, and can be a great way to help us finish off our opponents. And some other ways to help us get our entire team through come a Champion of Lambholt and Bellowing Tangleworm. Champion of Lambholt starts off as just a 1-1, but she has creatures with power less than Champion of Lambholt's power, can't block creatures you control, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on Champion of Lambholt. It's going to be incredibly easy for a deck like this to get her power up to an absurd amount. And then when that happens, our entire team, including her, are going to be basically unblockable. And then Bellowing Tangworm has Intimidate, and other green creatures you control have Intimidate. So essentially they're unblockable unless our opponent has an artifact creature or a green creature. And if they don't, they're going to be in big trouble. We're also going to be running some high value cards in this deck, such as Shamanic Revelation and Ronus's Monument. Shamanic Revelation is a sorcery for 3 green green, and it says draw a card for each creature you control, but it also has Ferocious, so you gain 4 life for each creature you control, power 4 or greater. So a card like this on top of Toski can provide even more card advantage. And there are also going to be scenarios too where we gain a ton of life from this as well. And then Ronus's Monument helps us out in multiple ways, it's a legendary artifact for 3. It says green creature spells you cast cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turn. So essentially for any creature that doesn't cost one in this deck, it can help reduce the cost to make them even cheaper. On top of that, for each creature that we can cast, and we're going to be able to cast a lot of them, they can pump other creatures and help them get damage through. Now when it comes to finishing off our opponents, we can make our team incredibly deadly with cards like Overrun and Scale Up. Overrun says creature you control get plus 3 plus 3 and gain trample until end of turn. So for our 1-1s, this can basically quadruple their power, and yeah, when you've got 10 plus creatures on the field, this makes a huge impact. And speaking of a huge impact, Scale Up says until end of turn, target creature you control becomes a green worm with base power toughness 6-4. And it's got an overload cost for 4 green green to basically make this happen to all of our creatures. Again, going from 1 power to 6 power is a huge jump. And speaking of huge jumps, let's talk about Colossification. It's an aura and it says when it enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature, Enchanted Creature gets plus 20 plus 20. So yeah, we throw this on Toski and he becomes a one-shot kill immediately. Again, Toski is incredibly hard to deal with already. And if we've got any way to get him through, that's going to be game over for that opponent. And then with Psychosis Crawler, we can win in a completely different way because it says whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So in this kind of a deck, this can be incredibly deadly and drain our opponents out very quickly. Now, as effective as all these win conditions are, they're still not quite as effective as the Golden Pick of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99, and the Golden Pick of this deck is World Slayer. World Slayer is an equipment that costs 5 and it costs 5 to equip. It says whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy all permanents other than World Slayer. So you put this on Toski and you just have to hit one player once and everything's gone except for this and Toski. It's pretty much impossible for your opponents to recover from that, so that's game over. Now I will mention with a card like this that blows up all lands and all things repeatedly, you might want to ask your friends or your playgroup before you start playing with it. So although I am including it in this deck tech and this list, please keep that in mind. 
The image of a tiny squirrel running around with a giant sword in its mouth, though, is just pretty funny, so I kind of had to include it. You know that, and just being incredibly powerful in combination with Toski as well. If you're looking to play this deck, consider joining the amazing Play EDH Discord. It's a great way to play Commander over webcam. In the description below, you'll find their Discord invite link as well as the tier that this deck has been approved at next to the deck list. So if you want to pick it up and play it as is, you can, and be sure to read their welcome information for more details. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.